Thank you very much, and thanks for your patience while we switch things around. Uh, my name is Kun van Dam. I'm a research fellow at Imperial College um, here in London, in South Kensington. Um, and I work in the Department of Chemical Engineering um, on a research program called Climate Compatible Growth, which I'll introduce briefly in this talk. It's, yeah, really great to be here. Um, thank you very much for the uh, PIEA for, uh, for inviting me and to come speak to you here today. Very exciting already, the, the introductions that we've, uh, we've heard as we, we go into this, uh, this competition. Um, yeah, my children are in primary school and secondary school, and it's just brilliant to see that, that my daughter, even at, say, computing lessons, she's applying that to climate change and to sustainability. And uh, my son in, in year seven is doing coding, programming, applied to you know, sustainability issues. So it's fantastic how that's already embedded in the curriculum at schools. And uh, that's something, yeah, we need to, uh, need to see uh, going forward. So I'm based um, at Imperial College University, where we have an MSc in the Energy Futures Lab on sustainable energy futures, and we have a one-year MSc. Um, and in this talk, I want to uh, give you a quick taste of the things that we, we teach our students and the things that the students themselves do um, and the skills that they develop and the tools that they, uh, that they use and the kind of insights that um, are generated, particularly around um, urban energy systems and, and greener cities. Um, at Imperial, I've got two weeks to, to teach this, and I think I have 12 minutes here today, so it's going to go quite, uh, quite fast. But um, I hope that's a useful, uh, a useful introduction. Um, so um, the project that I'm involved in a research program is called Climate Compatible Growth. Um, a number of leading UK and, and international universities uh, come together in a, in a program funded by the UK's FCDO, the Foreign Commonwealth Development Office, in supporting energy transitions in the global south, um, working countries in, in Asia and, and, and Africa in particular, um, and to enable their, their ambitions for, for, uh, for towards net zero. Um, as part of that program, we don't just want to develop the tools, say, in London and write a report and send that report to Hanoi or to, um, yeah, to Beijing or to Lagos. We want to develop the tools together with people there and hand over those tools um, and, and develop the, the capabilities in those countries also to develop their energy strategies. Um, and it's fantastic to be, uh, to be part of that. We work directly with UK government um, Energy Transition Council, which was initiated before the COP26, uh, which was held here in, in, in this country in, in Glasgow, and um, um, an initiative to collaborate with the international community um, and again to, to support energy transitions um, across a number of ETC partner countries, which are shown here on the, on the slides. And the focus really is on, on, on the just transition and, and, and energy access and, and enabling countries to develop their economies in a way that is not harmful to the economy and that they go towards their net zero targets as well as developing the country. Part of our work for the ETC, which is what, what I'm involved in uh, myself, is the Rapid Response Facility, a technical assistance um, coordination mechanism where countries, in, in a demand-led, bottom-up away approach, ask for support, say, with grid reinforcement so that more renewables can come on site, uh, with energy efficiency, with, with energy access, with clean cooking, etc. And we uh, try to find delivery partners in the international community that can respond to that. And Imperial College uh, London and uh, our CCG colleagues um, are part of that delivery mechanism as well. So our research goes into the countries and we can make a, a real difference there. Um, and by COP27 um, in Sharm uh, El Sheikh, we represented uh, 27 projects that have been uh, initiated and, and some completed and the impact that has made. And it's very exciting to see that that research and, and um, just international development partners um, efforts and supporting these countries meant that countries could make stronger ambitious and, and, and statements, um, part of say the um, call to clean agenda that was uh, coming out of Glasgow. So the, the, the results of this work then feed directly into, um, in, into policies in country. So I wanted to use the rest of um, the slot to just to give you a taster on a number of issues that uh, we address in our research and that, that students are, are, are working on um, related to, uh, to green cities and, uh, and low carbon cities. And I've picked three case studies, one in, in England, one in China and one in France, um, looking at transport and energy demand in buildings. Um, you probably know that, that more than half the con world's population live in cities. Um, in cities, you know, we use a lot of energy. 
um, about a third of our energy in transport, a third in buildings, and a third in, in industry, roughly. So if we can de decarbonize buildings and transport, we, we're making uh, huge progress. So that's what these, uh, these examples touch on. Swindon is a, a city in southwest um, of England, around 200,000 people. Um, it's, it's very tempting when we're looking at sustainability in cities to go to Tokyo and New York and Beijing. Um, but the fact is that most people actually live in, in smaller and medium-sized cities, so we need solutions that work there. Um, Maria, um, an MSc student, did a fantastic thesis uh, looking at electric vehicles, the impact electric vehicles would have in Swindon, um, and the impact on the electricity grid. So we collected data on the electricity network, the substations, different areas and land use. Then we looked at the people, the social demographic data, the people who live in, in, in Sweden who would have vehicles, and we look at charging infrastructure. A lot of data um, came, uh, came in, I mean that all of these projects look at, at modeling and simulation in the computer. We, we need data collected in, in the real world. Um, a key part of that is bringing that together from, from, from broad sources, um, spatial data, technical data, and, and, and data on the population. Very quickly, this is a, a model that the student developed um, of, um, of, of, the, of Swindon and, and the area around it. Uh, with characteristics for the land, some, some areas are densely populated, others are, are less so, some are commercial, some residential. Um, and then a, a very uh, bottom-up model of the population was created uh, with some uh, people having their own vehicles, some people have their own uh, parking space and charging infrastructure, others have children to drop off to work and, and, and use their vehicle that way. So we can create a population and, and model that. Um, and I'll show you on the next screen um, what that looks like. Um, and, and, and having created a model, then we can test scenarios. So what if more and more people buy an EV? What's going to be the impact of that? So we know how many EVs there are now, so we can measure the impact, but we don't know what's going to happen with the ambition that, that Swindon has. So we can see a, a, a larger uptake of electric mobility in our, in our forecast, but then we can not just write that in a report, but we can, we can run them and, and, and move the vehicles around. So hopefully this will work and you just see very, very small cars driving around. So the student built this model in just three months time, um, generating all the data and the, and, and, and the model bottom up uh, herself um, and, and implemented um, a tool that allows us to explore what happens with the loads on different substations depending on the uh, uptake of EVs with all the individual behavior included preferences for charging, distances driven, etc. So we have the, the space, we have the behavior, we have the technology, and then we can see what happens. And we can provide decision makers in the council or in the uh, utility companies um, with, with scenarios here. Um, jumping to Shanghai um, and from transport to buildings, um, here we modeled um, a small district shown on the bottom left of the screen uh, with a lot of flats, high density development. And the question was how does behavior of the people in there change the energy demands in that area, uh, depending on people's comfort, the temperature, depending on appliances that are being used and how efficient they are, how, how many people are in the house, etc. So again, we build a simulation model that allows you to test different configurations of houses, different configurations of families, different appliances, different prices that may influence the, the, the behavior as well. Um, and that gives us a tool to, before we even build this district, to test what the demands from a district like that might be and what they might be in the future. And once we have those demands, then we can see how do we, how do we um, best supply the energy there. Do we want to build a district heating network? Do we generate this energy locally from solar PV? Um, or do we need to go towards insulation and make sure that we reduce the demand and we can use optimization software to, to, to compare different solutions and, and give recommendations for that. Then I want to touch on Paris. I spoke about electric vehicles, which, which are, are going to be fundamental in our transition towards sustainable cities and, um, and zero carbon transport. But it's, it's, it's easy and it's tempting maybe to just take all of the internal combustion engines off the road and put electric vehicles 
on the roads. Um, that's going to solve part of our problems around air quality in cities to some extent, but um, alternatives need to be addressed. And, and it was highlighted uh, in, the, in the welcome address also, London, a great example of, of public transport. And I, I'd hope most of us came here on the underground or, or on the bus routes. Um, so testing what we can do if we actually remove vehicles from the road rather than simply replacing them is something that we looked at here in Paris. And the student, Tanguy, did, um, did a fantastic thesis and won, uh, won the award last year for the best thesis project in the, in the course. And what he focused on was um, the, the additional benefits from moving cars off the roads and replacing that by active transport and by, by public transport. So more cycling, more buses, uh, more walking, fewer cars driving around personal uh, vehicles. Um, that has an impact on emissions, but in this study we specifically looked at some of the health benefits and additional benefits that there are. People being active means they're healthier, can live longer, stay fitter, um, there's fewer accidents, there's um, uh, less, less noise, which has a, a, a negative impact on health. Um, of course, air pollution, a big one. And he used an, a number of tools to assess the impact of scenarios where we take, say, 10 or 20 or more percent of the vehicles in Paris, off the roads, and, um, and, and Paris is, is testing these kind of ideas, and they are making pedestrian-friendly areas uh, car-free zones. Um, and he could, he could then compare that with EVs and, and show that the impact of actually car-free developments um, is, is much higher than done of just electric vehicles. Um, and these co-benefits, savings in, in lives, uh, and, and, and costs associated with that is, in the end, uh, another decision that we can, can take into account. So there are just some numbers on, on comparing that, and I won't go into the detail here, but to show this picture that um, if you live in London, you know, these have been popping up all over the place. Roads have been blocked so that they cannot be used as through traffic, um, red runs, um, and they are now um, areas where you can comfortably uh, cycle or, or walk. And um, yeah, my children benefit from this, now being able to go to school on their own, walking alone, riding their bike to school, uh, because we know that during the school run hours, there's, there's no traffic in the, in the street. Um, the air quality impacts of this are, are huge. And uh, yeah, it's a policy that is, is being tested. And I think that has an impact on, on people, um, especially very young people who, who wouldn't be driving and who would now have more freedom to, uh, to move around. So I'll just wrap up here with a couple of um, closing remarks, really. Um, simulation models of cities are, are helpful to test different scenarios and to look at interventions in changing in land use, um, changing in transport infrastructure, in electricity infrastructure, water, um, everything in the city that is changing, uh, that urban planners are, are working on, that civil engineers are working on. We can test what happens in the city if we change that layout to some extent. We can also test what happens if we change the behavior of people or encourage people to change their behavior, if introduce new technologies, um, new prices, new policies that come into, into play um, and see what happens to them. That is also key in engagement with stakeholders. Now, clearly, these decisions shouldn't be made in City Hall or in an architect's firm um, or in an energy company's office. They need to be discussed with, with the population, with the people who live and work and go to school in the area. Um, and that decision support is key. A part of making that work. And a final comment um, is on, on systems thinking. These solutions need to be provided at, at the right scale and looking at that across different disciplines and across different infrastructure systems is, is key. So we need our electrical engineers and our mechanical engineers working together and with our transport engineers, with our architects, etc. Um, but I want to emphasize, even though this is a STEM event, that, that other uh, um, sciences and other disciplines are, are certainly uh, very important here. We need to know about policies, economics. Um, we work with artists who could communicate these ideas better and, and work with parties. So please, uh, please work together and, and make, uh, make the most of your individual experience and backgrounds and, uh, and interest and, and build the teams that can support uh, a, a fair transition, just transition in, uh, in cities. Thank you once again for, uh, for having me, and uh, it's really great to be here. Thank you.